Well, by now, you must know your way here in the dark. We're all ready, so come on in, make yourself at home. Well, hello again. Here we are, and it's number nine of the JP Gun Vault series. This time, we're going to go way back to the uh, 80s. When I was working in the gun shop, remember, I had my retail store. I got pretty heavily involved in uh, action shooting and with both semi-autos and revolvers. And I started to think uh, that's about the time that uh, revolvers came out with full underlug type barrels. It was like we had the Python, for instance, one of the first, and then Smith & Wesson started to come out with the 686 series. Uh, so there was a number of revolvers like that. And back in the, then the early 90s when we started JP and I was working out of my basement, uh, there again, we had time to do something other than rifles, you know. So we we certainly took in any kind of work we could to fill uh, fill whatever hours or whatever time we had. So we started to do a lot of revolver action work, and because uh, I had brought that forward from my retail store, did a lot of that, and I came up with this idea to integrate a compensator in the end of uh, in the end of the barrel. Now at that time, there was another company called uh, Magnaport. And they had a system where they were actually EDMing a couple of slots in the end of the barrel right next to the sights. And uh, I, I had a gun, a revolver like that. I just didn't think it was all that effective. And I, I understood that, of course, the, re the reason why compensators work is by creating a baffle surface against which high pressure gas can impinge and create a forward thrust on, on the weapon as a whole. So, uh, Dave Kamek was working with me at the time, and he was, of course, a tremendous machinist. We started experimenting, and actually this was one of the very first... I did this one myself, so it's not as good as a job as yet he would have done. But this is a 3-inch Model 66 Smith. And I uh, not only uh, put the, the compensator in the end of this barrel, then I had him port the top. So this is really a, uh, a hybrid system featuring two two things going on at once. And I shot this revolver for quite a while in the, in the snub nose class of PPC at the gunnery. Once again, if you remember the last episode, I showed you that, that uh, 1955 custom target, 45 ACP. I got some of the same features here. I got this, this device here, which allows me to get some purchase with my thumb here. It's got the bobbed hammer, so it's double action only. And I can ride way up on it like this allowing me to really get a control over this thing. But the point is, this system actually really worked. So we came up with the moniker Intracomp. And we started to do it on all sorts of things. Here's another one of my favorite wheel guns here. This is a 627, which is a uh, six-shot end frame. You notice it's got an unfluted cylinder. I, I really got a, rev a thing for revolvers with unfluted cylinders. And the Intracomp, intracomp job in there. Here I left the, uh, the hammer. I wasn't going to make a double action only out of this, but it is tuned. Uh, here is an 8 and 3 8 686 with a stupid big scope on it. This is my long range hunting revolver right here. <laughs> and believe it or not, this thing will hold about 2 inches at 100 yards. So extremely accurate with the right kind of ammunition. We actually went all the way and put three ports in this one. You can see it's been shot quite a bit. There's quite a bit of soot down there I never bothered to clean off. But yeah, amazingly accurate. And this is a Burris 7 power medium eye relief scope. So kind of an unusual thing. Uh, the eye relief is right about here on it. A lot of magnification, more so than really what you should have for something like this, but it was kind of a fun toy. Here is uh, a 5-inch 629. 
There again, kind of an unusual limited run revolver. And we have not only intercomp, but the hybrid system on the top, making this a very, very linear, especially like with 180 jacketed hollow point type loads. And you notice it's got a J point on it. So I got rid of that rear sight, put a dot sight. So this is really an effective, effective revolver here with the with the dot sight on it as opposed to the iron. Uh, went so far as to jewel both the trigger and the hammer on this. So really another, not really a sweetheart wheel gun. I like wheel guns. I was a, a pretty avid and effective revolver shooter for many years. Here is an eight shot end frame, a 627 performance center revolver. Also one of my favorites. Again, all set up, double action only. And this one I, also modified the action so it released a little bit earlier than how I normally set them up and the reason being that this one I really wanted to be able to stroke through fast and have that upset me the least, my sight picture the least. So, so that I could really get some speed on this revolver if I was shooting it for IPSC type competition. Again, ported, but not enough room up here to do the intercomp technique, but nonetheless, pretty cool revolver. Finally, we even started doing this on uh, some pistols. And here's a Ruger, a Ruger target model. And we've got the same technique on here. You see here in this barrel, we had the, also the ability to back cut it. And uh, what that does is it allows that high pressure gas to hit the forward surface and then dissipate quickly against this wedge without hitting a rearward surface, again, making it more and more efficient. And that was the theory on our other compensators too, why we always make that bat, made that back cut on them to allow the gas to escape without applying energy to, towards the rearward surface and depleting some of that efficiency. So that's a number of, uh, number of guns there that kind of go to a whole theme of a, of a service that we offered at the time. Of course, as time went on, we got so busy with our core uh, strength, which is the AR platform rifles, that we, we walked away from this. But another piece of history in the JP puzzle. I'm glad you could be with us. We'll see you in the next episode.